Good morning, church. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, any day of the week is a good day to be in the house of the Lord, but I think Sunday is my favorite day to be in the house of the Lord, for sure. It's one thing to watch church on the screen, but it's really good to be here, you know. Amen, amen. All right, this morning we're going to have our minister come up for a prayer. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the center of our joy. The very center of it. And realize the joy that he brings, that it, it just lasts and is pervasive. And helps us to realize that joy is not happy. Joy is much deeper than that. Joy comes in the midst of difficulty. Joy comes when, we're, when we are happy. But to realize that that joy no man can take away. The, Lord, the word, word of God says this. Nobody can take that away from us. And to know this morning... We have joy even though we are having difficulty in life. That we know that our days are not always joyful days to us. But God is saying, I want you to know I've never, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'm always there. And this morning, there are needs that you have on your heart. Give them to the Lord. Don't hold them to yourselves. Because he has said, cast the cares upon him. What does the word say? For he cares for you. Help us to be able this day to realize that what the Lord is going to do is something that we had not planned for, but he already had in his plan for us. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you. For you are among us this day in your house, Lord God. And Lord, we're, we're grateful that we just have the opportunity to stand and, and say your name, Lord God. To say, Lord God, that we believe, Lord God. We trust you, Lord God. Like Peter said of old, Lord God, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we know, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit in us, Lord God, reminds us each day that that's who you are, Lord God. And God, as we're standing here today, Lord God, we are, we are contemplating our lives, Lord God, and the lives that we have encountered in life so far, Lord God, that we see sorrow around us, Lord God, we see difficulty. We see things in life, Lord God, that cause a struggle to take place. But, Lord, you have told us, Lord God, just hold on. Hold on in faith, Lord God. Hold on knowing, Lord God, you've shown us, Lord God, before this time how your faithfulness unfolds. That you have brought us from darkness to light, Lord God. You've given to us an encouragement every day that we live. And you've shown to us, that, Lord, that you will never let go of us, Lord God. No matter what we do, Lord God, not that we want to continue to do the path that Satan would have us to be in but that, Lord God, we can always come back to you, Lord God. For you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God, we thank you. For your word is true, and it is true of you all the time, Lord God. Today, Lord God, as we stand, we remember, Lord God, not just our own needs, Lord God, but looking beyond ourselves. To Jerusalem today, Lord God. To Israel, Lord God. To knowing, Lord God, our prayer should go towards them, Lord God. But, Lord God, you've told us in the word, Lord God, that the peace of Jerusalem is important, Lord God. And we pray, God, by your Holy Spirit, that, Lord, as we pray, that the needs that we have, Lord God, that we will start to let them leave us and, and, and enter into you. And then, Lord, indeed, Lord God, you will give to us a peace, a peace that passes all understanding, Lord God. And God, we pray, Lord God, for families, for our children, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that by your Spirit, Lord God, that you will help them to be able to hear the word of God from us to them, and they will carry it through their lives and remember, Lord God. And most importantly, we pray, Lord God, for the word that will come forth today from the pulpit. But God, we are here for the purpose of hearing from you, Lord God, and to believe, Lord God, that as we hear it come, Lord God, and Lord, it will touch our hearts, Lord God, and we will carry something, Lord God, with us, Lord God, that will mean more to us than anything else this week for to be your word in us through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for our leadership, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that they are consistent and steadfast in your word, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that they are committed to bringing us towards you, Lord God. And we pray, God, by your spirit, that you allow us, Lord God, just to be your able servant. We have a word to share and a life to live. 
God, help us to be able to do this by your glory and honor. And for these things, Lord God, we are careful to give you praise because we want to call you Lord and mean it, Lord. Because if, we are your Lord, if you are Lord to us, we are your servant. Help us to walk. Help us to believe. Help us to walk in strength, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to allow the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to speak through us. And with these things, we are indeed careful and able to say amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know, I had the privilege yesterday of t attending the seniors ministry meeting as a guest, of course, um, this time of my, from, of my cousin sitting over there. And, you know, Sister Boston asked me to, you know, to kind of engage folks to share some of our things, uh, in, encounters of joy. And so I'm standing up there and I'm trying to share my favorite scripture, one of my favorite scriptures, which I've shared several times in the past, but my brain kept misfiring, you know? I tried to share about my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures being Proverbs 17, 22. And I called it everything but that. I called it 1 Corinthians, Colossians. I could have called it Jack and Jill, I don't know. But I could, I could not get it right. I knew the scripture, but I couldn't call, I, for some reason my brain just wasn't working. And you know, the thing is, nobody corrected me. <laughs> And I have to think of it, I have to attribute it to three, three things. Out of the fact that these wonderful, polite saints of God didn't want to interrupt their rambling guest, or maybe I'm in denial about being a senior. I'm like, no, that ain't it. And I said, then maybe I've been watching too much uh, CNN, watching too much politics where politicians get up there and make up stuff like, never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill, me boys. But I'm just going to attribute it to number one, that we have some wonderful people in this church that, that just love the Lord and they give me grace when needed. Amen. And I vowed that no more CNN when I'm still be working from home. Okay. And I just want to share this. I met a, a lady there. I've seen her several times at different ministries. And she shared with me that this is not her home church, but she likes to come for the ministries. And that tells me one thing, we doing something right in this church. Okay? The love of God exists and abides in this church and I attribute it to our leadership. So I just wanna share that one thing, amen? Now we got a lot of, uh, a lot of announcements, so I'm gonna try to get to them quickly. Uh, first, the mental health screening is today, 1230, right in the back there. Uh, the nursing home ministry going to Lighthouse Senior Living is today from 2 to 3, so feel free to join us. Uh, the youth choir rehearsal is Thursday at 6 p.m. Mass choir rehearsal is Thursday at 7 p.m. Then the grief and loss support group will be meeting on the 27th from 10 to 12 p.m. I also want to remind the men of the uh, men's luncheon from one to four on the 27th. So that's this Saturday. Uh, there's a sign up sheet back there at the information desk. So I just wanna remind you of that. Men, show up like you always do. Then I also wanna let you all know that the funeral service for our dear brother Kelvin Jones Sr. will be held this Friday, uh, 26th at CCC. The work will begin at 10 a.m. followed by the service at 11. The repast will be held immediately after service at the Interfaith Center in uh, Meeting House in Oakland Mills. So if you're more, if you need to have questions, please stop by the information desk. And again, let's continue to lift up our, our, our family, our, the Jones family in prayer, amen? Um, now I just want to welcome, welcome visitors. If you are here for the very first time to CCC, Columbia Community Church, I just want to welcome you. Just raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> welcome to you. Anybody else will be welcome to We welcome you on behalf of our pastor and our entire congregation. We thank you for coming to visit, and we hope that you'll come back again. Amen? You, you ready for a blessing? I am. You're going to receive it today in the name of Jesus. I'm claiming it for you. Amen? God bless you.
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Silence the noise in my mind, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Silence the noise in my mind, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I've got to see you, to see you.
thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all, all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your Your name 
praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In your house, Lord. In your house, my Father. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise our God. No name like the name of Jesus. Are you happy to be here this morning? Let me hear you give him praise. Glory to God. Give him praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of praise. You worthy, Lord. I say you worthy, my Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. I'm happy to be here this morning. Let's have a word of prayer. Holy Father, we stand in your presence this morning. Hallelujah. We ask you to breathe upon us, God. Meet the needs of your people, Lord. Lift up, deliver, and set free. And we shall give you praise. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. <laughs> well, this morning, I'm going to be sharing for the next half an hour on the hindrances to your faith. Now, we all have faith. When we come to God, he gives us faith. Because you have to have faith to come. So you have faith. It might be small as a mustard seed. But you have faith. One man said that the best thing for your brain is faith. Faith. Now, you've heard people say this. I've said it. Pastor Elliot said it. God has done all he's going to do. He died on the cross. Yes, he did. <laughs> Gave his life, took stripes on his back for your healing. He made it so that you don't have to be a slave to sin. Amen. Before you were a slave to sin. But Jesus made it so that you don't have to be a slave to sin. Amen. The best medicine, Dr. Wash says, is faith, faith. And we all have faith and we want it to grow. Uh, in Matthew 17, 20, it says, if you have faith, as a grain, a mustard seed. Have you ever seen a grain mustard seed? Isn't it tiny? If you drop it, you might as well forget it. Because <laughs> you're not going to be able to find it. He says, if you just have that much, he says, it's in Matthew 17, 20, says, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed. And he said, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Absolutely nothing shall be impossible. That, that should make you want to shout right there. <laughs> How do you get this faith? We know the word of God. Somebody say it's like the sun. You plant a plant. If you don't, a flower, if you don't, outside, if you don't give it some sun and some water, it's going to die. And so it is with faith. Faith is, a, you have to give it the word of God, and what else? Much prayer. Somebody said, well, I, I don't feel like praying. It has nothing to do with your feelings. <laughs> it has nothing to do with your feelings at 5 o'clock in the morning when we all, the prayer warriors, roll out to bed. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the feelings because the feelings say, roll back on the other side and go to sleep. Praise God. But we get up and we seek after God. A little bit of sunlight, the word of God. We need it. We need it to be strong in the Lord. We're living in the last days. How many know we're living in the last days? These are the last of the last of the last days. 
Yes, these are the last days, and we want to be ready when it comes. So somebody asks, what is God saying to the church now? God has a message for his church. God always has a message for his people. Always. And I was seeking him and saying, Lord, what is your message for the church? And this is what he gave me. He said, he said he's purifying and aligning his people with the truth. Can you see it happening in your life? Yes. You're longing for the truth. You're longing for the truth. You're longing for the truth. He said, I'm a lot of my people. See, there's a church and then there's a church within a church. You know that. Yes. Church within a church. He said, I'm lining. And what is he lining up? up? What is the truth? A lady called me the other night. We were talking on the phone. And she said to me, I go to one of the largest churches in Maryland, 15, 10,000 people. She said, but my pastor will not preach about the end times. She said he won't do it. And I wish he would preach about the end times. She said, because we are living in and I would like to know about the end times. She said, but he'll preach everything else but the end times. Now, if you come in this church, you know you hear about the end times and, and how we ought to be ready. And I told her, I said, I don't know why he won't preach it. But people, we need the truth. Right? The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Don't you find out the more truth you get, the freer you get? Yes. <laughs> the more truth you get of God's word, the, the freer you will become. You know who's in control. When you know who's in control, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen on your job. You don't have to worry about anything. What did he say in his word? He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. He often speaks this to me. He says, for I am God. Do you know he's God this morning? You really know he's God and that he's in control? That's what he wants. He's trying to bring us to the place where we know that we know that we know that he's in control. And when you get the truth, what should you do with that? You hold on to it. You hold on to the truth because you have an enemy. You know you have an enemy? <laughs> and he never miss an opportunity. <laughs> I see a lot of heads going like this. He never miss an opportunity to take you down. That's right. His job is to take you down. That's his job. And he is good at it. So we had better stay close to Jesus. Yes. If you stay close to Jesus, he'll let you know he's right around the corner. You better watch out. Yes, the Lord will let you know that. Yes, he will. He'll let you know. Not only will he let you know, but he's, he'll remind you that I am right beside you. I'm not only in you, but I am beside you. I am the paraclete that will carry you through. You're not fighting this battle alone. You're not in this alone. Bible says we are in Christ. We are new creation. It says if you know the truth, just I just said, you should, it shall make you free. You want to be free? When you get the truth, hold on to the truth of God. Hold on to the truth. Because like I say, Satan going to try to take that truth from you. He's going to try to mix something in with it. And he, he succeeded in too many lives. Hold on to the truth. Now we're going to start with number one. I have eight points. Yes. Eight. 
You're going to be here for two hours. <laughs> but you see, you, if, you, you, if you have faith, you want to know what the hindrances are. They're more than what I have written down. Yeah. Because these hindrances will sabotage your faith. You will be thinking, I believe in God, I believe in God, and you not believe in God. You, that's right. So I'm going to touch on eight this morning. Get your pencil and paper out. Number one, faith mixed with doubt. James 1, 2 to 8. That's right. When it's mixed with doubt, Praise God, he tells us something here. He says, and verse, start in verse 2, we're going to read some scripture. He says, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Know this, that the trying of your faith work in patient. Let, but let patient have her perfect work, that he may be perfect and in time wanting nothing. And in, if any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid if not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. He said, nothing wavering, no doubt. You have to know what you believe, why you believe it. Amen. For he that waveth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Listen to this carefully. Take it in your spirit. He said, let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Wow. But I thought I was believing God. Yeah. Got to stand on the word. The word keeps you stabilized. The word of God. We're going to talk about that. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Praise God. We, we want to be firm in the Lord. We want to know what we believe and why we believe. The man, the father came to Jesus. He said, Lord, your disciples couldn't cast out the demons, the spirit, the dumb spirit out of my son. <laughs> son had a dumb spirit. And he said, Lord, Jesus cast him out. We know the story. He said, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. So he said, if you recognize you're not believing, that's, no, that's a cure for that. The word of God and ask God to help you. Yes. Ask, this man did. He said, Lord, help me. Help, help my unbelief. I want to be able to believe your word and stand on your word. I want to know that you are God and without you, there is none other. I don't want my all mixed with unbelief. I want to be sure of who you are and that you will honor your word. You believe God's word. Number two, you must act on the faith. You must act on your faith. Somebody said, I, I'm going out. I, 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 I'm praying and, and, and I'm looking for a job. And you used to have to go out and give your resume. But now, but now you can get online, right? But let me see you, tell you that if you don't get online, if you don't get out there and put some action to your words, they don't mean nothing. It's what you do. It's what you do and not what you say. Some people really believe that if I get enough scripture in me, that's going to make it work. But that's just one part. That's just one part. You got to act on it. You have to act on it. What can I do? I remember all being in all robbers' meetings, this one particular meeting. And when he would pray for somebody to get a miracle to be here, and he would say, now get up, come on, get up and do something you couldn't do before. He said, come on, get up, get up. Do something you couldn't do. Act, and what he was saying, act on your faith. If you believe, he says, act on it. You believe in God for something, do all that you can do. 
and let God take care of the rest. Somebody just sit back and say, well, Lord, I prayed. I'm going to let you take care of it. No, you get out. You do all that you can do. Do all that you can do, and God will add to that. And this tells us the story. You know this story. When the man came to Jesus, his friends bought him, and they couldn't get in the door. And what would have happened? We would turn around and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can't get in. It's all full. And they say, oh, no, we're not leaving. Let's climb on the roof. Hallelujah. Would you climb on the roof with your friend on the bed? Open up the roof and let him down. That's faith. <laughs> That's faith. Yes, now you got to pay for the man's roof. <laughs> but that, I'm telling you, that's faith. That's faith. Open up that roof. We, we get into Jesus. How about the woman with the issue of blood? Now, she being a woman, not supposed to touch him anyway. Okay? Plus, she had a blood issue, which made her, by the law, not to be able to touch him. So she had two strikes against her. But she said, I don't care what the law says. I don't care what they say about nothing else. I'm getting to Jesus. How do you feel this morning? Are you determined to get to Jesus? Woo, glory to God. I'm determined. You have to be determined in these last days to get to Jesus. You have to be determined because as I say it and I'll say it again and again, you and I, we have an enemy. And he doesn't want you to get to Jesus. No, he wants you to give up. But the little woman with the issue of blood, she said, I'm, she said if I, I, you know the story. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And in those days, the garments they would wear had little tassels at the end of their garment. And she said, if I can just touch that. Praise God. Is your God real this morning? Is he real to you? Hallelujah. Is he real? He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You believe that? He says, I'll be with you. When you go through the water, when you go through the storms, he said, I'll be there. Praise God. She was determined to get to Jesus. You have to be determined in this day and time. Oh, yes, you do. One must believe. We believed. We believed when we accepted Christ and we confessed. We confessed. Believe and confess. Romans 10.10. 10. Yes. He said, if you do, and Mark 11.23, he said, you can say to the mountain, Move out of my way. <laughs> Woo! Move out of my way, mountain. Say, you're not stopping me. Like this little boy in the commercial. He said, I let nothing stop me. <laughs> He's a commercial for, for one of the helpers' com uh, business that help little children. Matter of fact, you have a little um, a rope, not a little rope, but a little scarf like saying that you are a helper send money to help. But he comes out and he says, he says, I let nothing stop me. I love it. I love it. Because he's just a little teeny thing in a little wheelchair and he has so many different issues. Now if he can say, I let nothing stop me, we should have that same attitude. Yeah, we should have that same attitude. I will not let nothing stop me to get in to see Jesus. Mm. Praise God. Believe in, believe in. Listen to David. You know the story. David meeting Goliath. Had a little slingshot. Can you believe that? 
was little three little rocks. Can you imagine that? Visualize that in your mind. And he said, but today I'm going to have your head. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The word of God comes alive in my spirit. He said, I'm going to have, what? Because <laughs> when I send these rocks at you, <laughs> he said, the Holy Ghost, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> he said, the Holy Ghost is going to get in them. You know, we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God. He said the Spirit of God is going to put them right where they're supposed to be. And when, you, when I finish with you, you're going to be on the ground. Hallelujah. That's the kind of faith God wants us to have. He'll send trouble your way. Yes, he will. Because he's trying to perfect you. He's trying to mature you. He's trying to grow you up in faith. He said, that's what he, I read. He said, thinking, yeah. Yeah, concerned if I would try to come to test you. Yes, to make you strong in the Lord. Because he knows in these last and evil days, they're going to come. We have to keep our eyes on the Lord. Number four, failure to understand your new position in Christ. As in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Failure to understand your new position in Christ. That can hinder your faith. You, when, you, when you understand your position in Christ, you, you know how to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Listen to what it says. 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. All these sinful habits. You don't have to give in to them. Because God said, I'll go before you and I'll make a way of escape. He says, you're, you're not old. You, you, the, the old man is put away. We know it's progressive sanctification. It takes time. But behold, all things become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And have given us the ministry of reconciliation. God wants us to know who he is and why he's doing what he's doing. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Praise God. We are ambassadors for Christ. Are you an ambassador for Christ? The old man's passed away. When, when temptation and stresses and, of life and things come your way, the Bible tells us what to do. He says, I'll make a way for you to escape. I'll make a way. I, 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 I'll say this. I won't call it a name. But it was a, a counselee. Counselee of mine had, had an issue. I just put it that way. Years ago. And I asked them when it came back to my office, I said, tell me, I can tell you what the word of God says. I said, he said, I'll make a way of escape. I said, I want to ask you a question. Did God make a way of escape? I want you to tell me. And you, you know what the person said? He, the person said, Yes, he did. I said, thank you, God. You keep, you're a keeper. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, you're a keeper of your word. Said he made a way, but I didn't take it. Okay? When God makes a way, take it. When God makes a way of escape, don't pass it away. Don't pass it away. Don't take it. But he promised in his word, he said, I will make a way for you. I will do it. Does he keep his word? I asked him, I said, did he keep his word? He said, yes, he did. Praise God. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. 
Failure to understand our new position. We don't have to take what Satan brings. We don't have to. If you stay full of the word, you stay yourself in prayer in these last and evil days. I mean, they evil, aren't they? Oh, God, some stuff I see. Oh, I was watching just a home. Look, innocent home, buy homes, people, people buying homes. And lo and behold, the woman comes out and she says, after she bought her home, she said, now she, she said, I'm looking for a wife. <laughs> That's what I said to Brenda. I oh, know, I'm just speaking the truth. You know the truth. You know the truth. Said that's now I'm looking for a partner. I'm looking for. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Something not right here. <laughs> Look, let me tell you, saints, these are the end times. He said the days will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. They came knocking on the door saying, I want to know the men. They said, the father said, well, I have two beautiful daughters. Don't you want them? No. Somebody said, you don't talk about that. I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it. Satan doesn't like it, but I'm going to talk about it. They said, we want to know the men. That's what he said. She said, I want to know the men. That's who I want to know, the men. And God said, that's not my will. That's not the will of God. He said, if, if, if I wrote a paper on Sodom and Gomorrah, and I had to justify my answer, and th they wanted to take me one direction, and I didn't want to go in that direction in my, with my paper. And I said, they wanted to go hospitality where they weren't hospitable. So God never burned down a city because people weren't hospitable. <laughs> Woo! Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. He never burnt down a whole city. Somebody said, well, don't, don't say anything. I'm going to say something, God, because you say it. It's not the will of God. God made, thank you, <laughs> Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam and Adam. He didn't make Eve and Eve. <laughs> we love them. We love them, though. We love them. We want them to come in because we want to get them delivered. We want them to be healed. That's it. They have a hurt inside, and they want to be healed. I wrote a paper, and I wrote that paper. I read this book, and it says, this man said the Lord had called him to minister to homosexuals. He was a Christian man, doctor. And he said, very seldom, you will find where the, the, the genes or something was mixed up. He said, most of the time it's because something happened during those developing years, sexual, and that caused them to go in that direction. He said, but no, it's not. It's not only occasionally it happens. I know a, a, a lady, it did happen to her, and they called her in, and they say, your little girl is not going to be like a normal little girl, and we want to start very, very early trying to correct it. That was years ago. But God says, do it my way. Do it my way. Do it, my, do it God's way. You call yourself a Christian, do it God's way. Do it God's way. Do it God's way, people. God, I, I didn't mean to go that far into it. I really didn't have that down. Oh, praise God. <laughs> praise God. Praise God.
Say, Lord, we want to do it. We want to do it your way. Not knowing, not, not knowing I was positioned in Christ. Let me tell you a story. I had a very close friend years ago, long before I got married. That was many, many years ago. And uh, she was raised in a home where there were no, no thought of God. No thought of God. She told me, she said, you know, my parents let me do anything I want to do. She said, I wish my parents were like yours. I said, yeah, because my mother would have killed you. <laughs> you would think you were dying. <laughs> One time my mother was giving my sister a spanking. I thought sure she was going to kill her. And I said to her later, I said, I said to my sister, I said, do you know mother's going to kill you? <laughs> and you know what she said to me? I don't care. Let her kill me. She was as bad as my mother. Okay, she had her mother genes. I didn't. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But Sharon said to me, she said, I wish my mother was, would, would guide me like your mother guided you. And so long story short, so one day, she called me on the phone, and I told her, I said, you need Jesus. And I explained to her, and I said, if you say this prayer, at the, if you say this prayer, I said, something's going to happen. And I didn't know she said it. But she called me later, and she said, I said it. I said, you did? She said, yeah, I said it, and I meant it. She said, and I went to my party. I was trying to do my drugs. I was trying to do all the things I used to do. She didn't know she was a new creation. That's my point. She didn't know. You know, she was still doing her drugs, still doing all the stuff, her gods and everything that you can think of and that's, that the world do. She said, I tried to do it again. She said, and the Holy Ghost said to her, she didn't know who was. Well, she said, you new creation now. You born again Christian. You don't live like that anymore. So she called me, and she said, I, and, and I said, I don't? I said, no, you, you, you're you Christian. Christians don't live like that because you don't give the right witness to the world. How the world going to know what Christ is like if you acting just like them? And all you have is just words. You have words. And she said, okay. She said, she could join the church. She got really into church, found a wonderful husband. And a few years ago, she was over here at the John Hopkins or somewhere over there, you know, Georgetown. And she called me because she had cancer. She said, I'm dying. I'm dying. She said, I'm ready to go. And she slipped away. Yeah, she said, matter of fact, she said, how much longer do I have to put up with this? And she was talking about the suffering that she was in. She said, I'm ready to go. Get me out of this suffering. Yes. But let me tell you something. Number five, let's move on. Ooh, 10 more minutes. He says, Comf number five, it says, Conf hindrance to your faith. Confess sins and not remember it. Confess, do you get it? Past tense. If you sin, 1 John 1 and 9, we all know that scripture. Confess your sins and he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. But conf listen to this. Confessed, if you confess your sins, and the Bible said we all have sinned. Yeah. He said if you confess your sins, they are not remembered. God doesn't remember your sin past sins if you confess your sins to God. He didn't say you had to confess them to man. He said, confess them to him. He said, they're not remembered. And I love this second scripture in Jeremiah 31, 34. He says, for I will forgive their iniquity, which is sins, and I will remember them no more. You know, people, he said, I, he said, I won't even remember them. People won't let you do it, you know. They want to constantly remind you. But God said, I won't remind you. He said, I won't even remember. I put them in a sea of forgetfulness, and if I looked for them, I couldn't even find them. I, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah. 
But he said, I, in Jeremiah, he said, I won't even remember them. God won't remember. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, he gives us a new start. He gives us a new start. And we all need a new start. A new beginning. We need a new beginning. We all need it. We need it. Please don't sit back and say, I don't need it. Yes, you do. We all need it. I need it. Yes, I tell the Lord one day, I was looking for my husband and I couldn't find him in the house. I said, God, don't tell me you came and left me here. <laughs> I did. I said, honey, where are you? <laughs> where are you? Jesus, please, God, don't you come in this rapture and leave me. <laughs> I mean, we're laughing, but that's no fun. <laughs> My heart started going fast. <laughs> you took him and you left me. Don't leave me down here. Jesus Almighty. <laughs> Be also ready. For you don't know when he's coming. You don't know when your last day is. I don't know when my last day is. But I'm ready. You ready this morning? Are you really ready? Woo! Isn't that a good feeling? Hallelujah. Paul said... To be absent from the body is to be pre in the present with God. Woo, my God, my God. Oh, yes. Six works. I'm going to get through all of them because I'm going to skim them, okay? Works. You know, some people depend on their works. Their faith get in their way because of their works. It's a good thing to do works, but works can't save you. They, they can't merit salvation. They can't merit deliverance. They can't merit anything, but they're good works, and that's good. It's good to have good works. We should be out doing good works, but they cannot sub be a substitution for faith in God. And when you come to God, you can't bring your works. No, but we should be. Number seven. Number seven is sight. Now, that's a hard one. That's, that's really a hard one. Going by sight, 2 Corinthians 5 says, says, for we don't walk, we don't live by sight. We live by faith in the word of God. So when you're in a, a, a difficult situation, quote the word of God. Quote the word of God. Tell the devil, you no longer have power over me. You no longer have power over me. I have a new boss. <laughs> His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Say so we walk, we live, we live, we walk, we live by faith, not by sight. This is the last one coming up. Lack of patience. You know, the Lord said to me some years ago, he said to me, he said, my people don't always receive what they should because they have a lack of patience. The Bible says after we've done the will of God, then we need what? Isn't, isn't that awful? <laughs> Come on, tell the truth. I always just say, well, Lord, after I've done your will, then I have to wait some more? He said, many of my people miss their blessings because they rush ahead of me. They can't wait. You have to learn. The song said, we have to learn how to wait. Wait on the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me how to wait upon the living God. Don't be weary. Don't faint. But learn to wait on God. Now, I'm going to tell you something because I'm finished. I'm going to tell you something else. This morning, I had a hard time sleeping. 
My God, I went, Satan, you lying devil from hell. That's why I, <laughs> no, but that's the way I talked to him. <laughs> I, that's the way I talked to him. If you were in my house, you would think somebody was in my house besides me. I said, you, I said, I don't care what you bring my way. God brought me through once. This is what you, come on. You're ahead of me. Yeah. He'll bring me through again. I said, he brought me through once. He'll bring me through again. I said, he'll make me live by what I teach. Yeah, it comes here first. Everything I teach, he'll make me live by. Well, let me tell you, he, Satan said this morning, he said, you didn't sleep that well. He said, why don't you just tell pastor, you know he's always ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, he's always ready. He's an encyclopedia, dictionary, <laughs> All put together. Yes, he is. Very smart man. I said, said, won't you just get him? And you know what I said, honey? I said, you might have to do it this morning. He said, you know what he tells me? He said, check your email. And he said, if I decide to do it, I'll send you one. <laughs> That's what he tells me all the time. <laughs> Praise God. But, you know, I love the man. You, you know that. You know, he's a, he's a good man. I tell him all the time, babe, you're a good man. I'm so, I'm so glad I married you. <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise God. We still laugh and have fun. Yes, don't we, huh? <laughs> we still laugh and have fun. This year, November will be 58 years. Hallelujah. 58 years, 58 years standing for the Lord. Praise God. You know what I'm going to do today? Uh, I, I, I'm, I just, my sister's going to sing one of my favorite songs. But you know what? Before she does, uh, you can sing something, maybe something else. If you want special prayer this morning, I just feel led to pray for somebody. I want you to come and just round the altar. Sister Boston, you come with the ministers, Manokia, anyone else, Thomas. The ministers come and lay hands on you. Praise God. I don't like to leave with, you know, with somebody might want special prayer. Yes, Lord. Here you are, Sister Boston, Mr. Boston, Mr. King. Praise God. This is a house of prayer. Yes, it is. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, my mama. 
Can't help but praise him. <laughs> I said we can't help but praise him. Amen. Yes, thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Woo! Yes, Lord. Thank you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, God. Father, as we stand in your presence, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your miracles of healing and deliverance. We thank you, God. Let your blood cover us as we go forth. Keep us covered under the blood and draw us closer to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You're